So I recently did a video on how covert narcissists have a game board, right? They, they use the drama triangle as their way of relating to people 24 seven. And the name of the game is triangulation. I talked about how they do this in the family and in the work environment. So if you have not seen that video, I encourage you to watch it. In today's video, I want to talk about how a covert narcissist can enter social groups. And this narcissist is called the communal narcissist, which by definition is someone who exhibits narcissistic traits in community settings, appearing to be altruistic and humble while actually motivated by a desire for praise and validation. So let's dive in. For those that don't know me, my name is Michelle. I'm a trauma-informed coach and a somatic experiencing practitioner. I'm also the founder of the School of Transformation, where survivors of emotional abuse, whether it's narcissistic abuse or childhood emotional neglect, meet together live on Zoom and we do the inner healing work together. It's not enough to understand and know about narcissists. The next step is to then know about and understand yourself so that you can heal from the damage that narcissistic abuse causes. So I'll leave the link here for anyone that might want to check that out. There is currently a seven day free trial. Something that happens to a lot of victims of narcissistic abuse is they finally start understanding that they had a narcissistic family system. And so they grow up, they start their own lives, and maybe they understand those dynamics and so they can handle their family in a more healthy way, even if their family is unhealthy. So they, they put that into place. But what many start to realize with time is that that unhealthy one-sided dynamic of narcissist codependent that maybe played out throughout their whole life in childhood also plays out in so many of the social situations they find themselves in. And so that's why we're deep diving into this today. So let's talk about what happens when a covert communal narcissist enters a social situation or a social group. Again, we have to remember that anyone that's high on the scale of NPD, and by the way, if you wonder like, what is that scale? And where are you on that scale? That's gonna be my next video. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do so and hit the bell icon so that you're notified of that. And you can find out where you are on the scale as well as where some of the people in your life are as well. Okay, back to our video. When a narcissist enters a community or a social group, right? In the beginning, remember I said they're always playing their game. They always have their game board out. They always have the pieces or roles that they're ready to put people in. But in the beginning, it's kind of hard to spot. Here are some things you can look for. When that kind of a person enters a friend group, oftentimes what they're looking to do is to receive praise and validation of how great they are. So honestly, what it starts to look like is almost like these little groups that almost have a cult-like appearance where one person in the group is really admired and the other people that are part of this group almost are just like mirrors to reflect this other person. This usually happens because covert narcissists can be extremely charming. They can be bigger than life. They can talk about their goals. They can talk about things in such a way that people look at them like, wow, like this is an amazing person. And the way they do this can be very subtle. And this is where they start to jump onto the drama triangle is when they start talking about how amazing they are and how humble they are in a very covert way. In other words, they don't sound like they're bragging. They don't sound like they're being entitled. But when you really listen to what they're saying, people that are humble don't talk like that. Somebody that's truly humble doesn't talk about all the things they do and then say, you know, but I'm really humble and people, you know, feel uncomfortable around me because of that. And, you know, people judge me, but I'm really just trying to give my best and be, you know, the best I can be for other people. But it makes other people maybe um, feel uncomfortable because of how they feel about themselves. Humble people don't do that. Humble people do what they do and they don't talk about it, which is evidence of their humility. But people that are high on that scale will talk about what they do and then as if they are a victim for being so amazing. What I've seen this create in a social situation is people actually feel the need to protect this person. They get extremely protective of this amazing person and want to make sure that nobody hurts them. And it also blinds them to what the narcissist is doing and their motives. In essence, they inadvertently become 
what is known in the community of narcissistic abuse as a flying monkey. These are oftentimes good intentioned people that are fooled by who the narcissist is and what their real motives are, right? But they tend to believe everything the narcissist says. They begin seeing life through the lens of the narcissist perspective only. It becomes the only perspective that is accepted in the group. And so by painting themselves as the victim of how amazing they are and what this causes in other people, they're putting themselves on that drama triangle. They are already playing their game. And those that are trying to protect the narcissist are stepping onto the rescuer role. Now, something to remember about this game board that the narcissist loves to use is that no matter what role you step into, the fact that you're playing the game means you will eventually spin from one role to the next, on and on and on. So let's talk about what that looks like. So again, the narcissist comes into a social group, very charismatic, which in turn causes a lot of admiration for them. But it's normal that with time, people are going to start having different opinions. They're going to see things differently. And that's where the drama triangle and the triangulation and the narcissist games and manipulation really begin to surface. So for example, let's say you're in this friend group, everyone's admiring the narcissist, but one person begins to see things differently or maybe doesn't like an approach that's happening or simply has a different perspective about somebody or something else. Well, with narcissistic relationships, with a covert narcissist, with any narcissist for that matter, it's their way or the highway. And they truly expect every person in that social group to have the exact same mindset as them. When you have a different perspective of somebody or something, unfortunately, if you're dealing with somebody that's high on the scale of NPD, you are now viewed as an enemy instead of just somebody with a different perspective. In fact, there's nothing wrong with having different perspectives. It's what makes us human. We're all unique. But a narcissist needs everyone to have the same viewpoint. So when you don't, you actually become a target of the narcissist. And that's how you accidentally get put on the drama triangle as the persecutor. The narcissist takes your difference of opinion as an attack, as if you're doing something wrong instead of just being human and having a different opinion. The way they share this with the other people in the group is in a very covert way of making you look like the problem. They might explain that they're with their viewpoint, they're just caring about people. They're just trying to help. They're just being their best self and their best person. But you don't realize that. You don't share that view. You can't handle how great and how wise they are. They will somehow be able to point out that your different perspective is flawed, even just because it's different from them. They'll discuss this in a way where they feel sad and they feel bad that that's happening. So again, the people in that group can tend to want to defend the narcissist by their way of, of smearing you. You become the person that's attacking someone that's so good, that's doing everything right, that you are obviously the problem. And sadly, somebody in that situation can find themselves ousted out of a friend group that they've been in for a long time by someone that just came in as a covert narcissist, wolf in sheep's clothing. So again, it's their way or the highway. Also, you'll start to notice in a friend group that a narcissist can criticize others and give advice to others, but it's always one-sided. No one ever gives them advice. Because the second you try to give advice to the narcissist, once again, it's viewed as an attack. You're placed on the persecutor role. They're the victim. Everyone else in the group steps into the rescuer role. You also are ousted from the group. Something else you might notice in a group setting, if there's a covert narcissist involved, is their way of turning people against each other. And once again, they do this in a very subtle way. One of the trickiest ways they do this is by combining a little bit of truth with a whole lot of lies. For example, let's say the narcissist is talking to you and they say something about someone else like, oh, I think that so-and-so, you know, is really a hypocritical person. You know, they're very um, judgmental or they talk bad about people and they're doing what they're accusing the other person of doing and they're sharing it with you. Let's say you're just listening. And the only thing you say is, I didn't 
know they were like that or I, I didn't ever realize that about them. They will go back to the other person and say something like, you know, I was talking to so-and-so and they were talking about how you're very critical and judgmental and how everything that they were saying, they will twist and say that it was the other person saying it. And so all of a sudden they've just created this division. And it might be that the person that they're talking about and you are very close mm -hmm. and they can't handle that because they have to be the one that's in the center and everyone else is around them reflecting back to them. So if they can break up any other close bonds so, so that they're the only one, right? They're the only one that everyone looks to for the narrative, right? The narcissist is a leader and they surround themselves with followers. So if they break up that alliance, that ensures their ability to continue controlling the group. And there are so many different scenarios I can talk about. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is narcissists enter social groups in order to gain validation, approval, in order to have the outside or others reflect who they wish they were. Instead of becoming who they really want to be, they prefer to polish their false image and have everyone else reflect that false image. And they live life through that false image. And so their social groups are designed to keep that false image of who they want people to think they are alive. If you're wondering if someone in your social group is a narcissist, some other things that you can ask yourself are, do you feel like you're giving and giving and you leave feeling drained, but there's never any take? right? Relationships are give and take, but with narcissistic relationships, it's all give and no take. Do you feel unsafe to share your perspective as if that person's going to get angry? Do they get angry when you have a different opinion from them? Do they emotionally punish you when you have a different opinion from them? An emotional punishment might be exclusion from the group, stonewalling, or the silent treatment. Do they insist on everything always being their way or the highway? And do they always portray themselves as this victim? In fact, no matter what bad thing is happening to them, it's always because it's someone else's fault. It has nothing to do with them or anything they do that needs to be worked on. And then a couple of things that you might want to self-reflect about yourself. If there's a narcissist in your social group, is your personality changing? For example, have you begun to doubt yourself? Almost wondering if your way of seeing things is the correct way. Narcissists can spin you so much that you begin doubting your own reality. So if you suddenly don't feel like you can trust yourself after this person enters your social groups, that's something to look for as well. And if you're always confused because things don't make sense. Narcissists spin conversations so fast and so often that it's almost like trying to live life on one of those merry-go-rounds, right? Where you're spinning and you're dizzy all the time. So those are some ways that you can kind of evaluate if a narcissist has entered any of your friend groups. Now, to me, one of the most important things we can learn is not so much how to spot a narcissist. That's obviously important. But what's actually more empowering is being able to spot a narcissist and stay you. To be able to stay in your reality, to stay grounded in who you know you are despite them. To me, that's what everyone's goal should be. It shouldn't be about trying to find the narcissist because what you're doing is you're putting all of your energy on them, not on yourself. And so the real empowering thing is to take back your power, to live your life as who you really are despite them. And again, if you feel like you're suffering from narcissistic abuse in the sense that you lost yourself, you're not who you know you were and you're struggling to get yourself back, you may want to check out my live meetings in the School of Transformation. There's a seven-day free trial. I want to invite you to come check it out.